Um, yeah, so welcome to our yeah, basically first dedicated Billy Data and Builder call. Um, it should take place on a regular basis from now on, and we just want to like update you on um, yeah some stuff we worked, which uh, will directly impact you, for example, um, especially for validators and people who build on Kive. And um, those tools include, for example, supervisor, DLT, pipeline, casing, and uh, also, of course, the Kive network in general, especially on our agenda today, the K on testnet, since we made a few um, changes there, especially in the background. So um, yeah, excited to share some updates. And um, I think Christopher will start with the first points. So yeah, let's go. Yes, I can kick it off from here. So yeah, uh, hello again. Uh, I think most of us uh, were already included in our beta testers call. Uh, yeah, as Troy mentioned, I will start um, to present the latest supervisor changes um, with the yeah supervisor v2 release. And therefore, I just want to give you all a short overview of the supervisor's general functions. Um, yeah, to participate as protocol validator in a Kive pool, as you all know, you need to run an archival node as data source. And yeah, because tenement nodes are implemented to sync as fast as possible to live hide, um, the syncing process is very inefficient and resource consuming uh, for the yeah, dedicated usage um, as a data source in a Kive pool. And therefore, we have implemented the supervisor, um, which improves the, yeah, the overall uh, efficiency of the syncing process, especially towards the um, yeah, requirements and preferences um, of the data source node in a Kive pool. And yeah, this is mainly realized by, by two things. Um, the first one is that the supervisor stops the syncing process when a node has yeah, synced enough blocks um, ahead from the Kive pool. Um, by default, it's two days. It's um, yeah, um, shown here with this one block. This can you imagine as two days. And when a pool caught up to a uh, predefined threshold, then the supervisor restarts the syncing process yeah. to ensure that the node will always have yeah, the required um, blocks, a uh, block difference between the actual um, current pool height and the latest height of the data source node. Besides this, the supervisor prunes all the data that has already been validated. Um, yeah, and therefore there's no longer any need to store it and yeah, to keep the, the storage requirements as um, small as possible. And um, the supervi supervisor prunes uh, the yeah, already validated data. And this is yeah, the, the main part of the um, supervisor v2 update, I would say. Um, so we optimize this whole pruning um, pruning process. And yeah, the, the, so now the, the supervisor not only stores, uh, not only, sorry, prunes um, the state, uh, the block, the blocks of the um, of the node, but also the state. And yeah, um, besides this, uh, so we are using for the state and block pruning the inbuilt tenement functions. But besides this, we've also included the force compact method, which is yeah especially built for Go level DB nodes, which reduces the data uh, the stored data size significantly. And yeah, so we had some problems. Um, yeah, thanks to Liver again for reporting. We had some problems with the force compact um, mechanism with the osmosis node. And this is why we uh, decided to disable it by default. Um, but you can definitely try it out um, for yeah, other nodes like Kronos, for example, or Excela um, by simply adding the force compact flag um, as shown here uh, to your supervisor start command. Besides this, uh, we've also improved the config handling. And yeah, with that, uh, you, you now can use the supervisor uh, on one machine for more than one node and by simply yeah, pointing um, with the start command um, to your um, yeah, specified uh, config. And then you can yeah, use um, different and individual binary names for your supervisor process. Yeah, then let's go ahead to the ELT pipeline. Um, yeah, there we have also an updated version uh, enabling to yeah, now sync or load um, any data items with a predefined start and end key into, your, yeah, into the de data destination of your choice. Um, so, for example, when you um, want to load um, the Arcway blocks, uh, but not all Arcway blocks, but just the Arcway block 1 million to 1.2 million uh, into your Google BigQuery, for example, you can now do it. Um, but it's not um, yeah, deployed on Airbyte Cloud yet, but we are on this. Um, but yeah, yeah, now you can also 
um, use the local deployment. Um, I will send a link to our docs uh, later on, and then you can check it out if you want to yeah, sync um, some data into your data destination. And I think from here, Troy can uh, go on with yeah, the latest casing updates. Yes, thanks, Christopher. And um, since I see some of <laughs> the protocol validators here, I'm sure you're also using casing, especially for the state sync pools. And um, we made a few upgrades in the last couple of weeks and months. And in case you missed them, we just want to recap them quickly. So I think there are some interesting uh, new features there, especially yeah, for you. So we just want to yeah, give a quick overview there. So starting with the info command, if you're ever wondering, if you want to sync a chain quickly, uh, what's available, what's not, you can just type casing info. You can also add the chain ID command if you want to see it for account, like for example. It summarizes like uh, all the information which is available here yeah, in the table. And um, going to the next improvement, um, I'm sure it was also quite annoying all the time. Um, should be on the next page. Perfect. Uh, it's the home. So um, before, you had to always specify, of course, the binary path and then the home path where the data directory lies. And actually, we were able to infer the home directory from the binary itself. So if your home lies in the default um, home folder, which is usually yeah, under your user dot the project name, uh, you don't need to specify it uh, every time. You can, of course, still overwrite it. That's possible. But now, yeah, if you want to type commands, it should be way faster. Uh, going to the next feature, um, maybe also something interesting. Before, you had to always specify the pool IDs. Uh, maybe also especially annoying for the uh, snapshot command because you need to specify both um, block pool and snapshot pool and you always have to look it up. Uh, so we introduced sources. Um, so we have a source registry on GitHub where we saved or mapped basically every pool ID to the project. And so you can just specify the source, for example, Archway or Osmosis or Kronos or whatever, and then it will directly infer the pool IDs there. So also way quicker and you don't have to memorize or look up every time the IDs. Um, going to the next improvement, um, we have yeah basic CLI shortcuts. So they came rather late, but um, now they're there. So yeah, quite simple, I would say. Should be yeah quite straightforward, just less typing. And then of going to the next feature, we have the reset flag. So in case um, you are doing some, for example, height things or um, yeah, state things. You want to check out certain heights, analyze them. You always have to, of course, start with a fresh chain, execute reset or chain D, we unsafe reset all before every command. So we added a flag there, as you can see below with the reset all flag or in short, dash R. Uh, so it directly resets it for you and you don't have to type it extra all the time. So in case you're wondering. And then for the last two features, uh, we have consensus engines. Um, this is something we introduced with uh, DYDX on Kaon um, because um, before we only had to deal with uh, Tendermint, uh, but DYDX was actually the first chain we encountered, which was already using the new version of Comet BFT, and they do something differently. So that's why we had to also support Comet BFT. And now, actually, in case you have not seen it uh, on Kaon, it's actually Celestia warning, and they have also a fork of Tendermint. It's their Celestia core, how they call it. And so we also added support for that. So in case um, you want to join the DODX pool or the Celestia pool, you have to just specify the engine and then Ksync will just take the um, yeah, specified fork there. So it's possible to communicate with the app. And uh, furthermore, um, we have auto updates finally with Ksync because um, especially if you're running a pool, when you encounter um, a chain upgrade, you have to always switch um, the update or the, up, the, the binary. And now um, you can specify the Cosmovisor and uh, together with like um, system D, um, we have basically find a workaround how you can like auto upgrade, just put like all the upgrade binaries into the Cosmovisor path, like you know it from uh, normal chains. And then uh, system D will restart and pick the right binary and then you don't have to do it manually every time now. And I see something in the chat. Ah, all right, okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, I hope there was something interesting um, in this part for you. 
So um, now regarding the Keon testnet, um, I'm sure you noticed that um, Keon testnet was quite dead <laughs> uh, in the last weeks. And um, so this was kind of a problem because, of course, the testnet should be the place where every pool should go for because, uh, before it goes on mainnet. And actually, it was so bad that actually mainnet or bugs were happening on mainnet since they weren't recognized on testnet because, yeah, there was just so less activity that we just didn't catch them. So um, what we do now is that uh, every pool which goes in testnet, uh, we will join that pool. And since we have a protection now that um, a pool will automatically halt, um, if a validator has more than 50% voting power, we have to actually join with three validators. They are all owned by Kaif and they will always stay in uh, Kaon testnet pool and um, therefore ensuring that it always will run. What we also did is um, decreasing the upload interval. So um, basically the, on Kaon pools are producing bundles faster than on mainnet, so we can also ensure that we always add which is quite important because, of course, we want to catch the bugs before they happen on mainnet. And with this, um, yeah, we hope that we can, um, yeah, or we, yeah, we can catch the bugs before they come on mainnet. And therefore, yeah, hopefully, don't have that much slash issues anymore. And of course, um, you're welcome to join testnet pools. And um, I've, I would say the main reason for that is, of course, because there's no real monetary incentive there. And that you want to, you can test basically your config before you go and main it. For example, right now we have Celestia, new chain, new project, whatever. You can yeah spin up your infrastructure, join the testnet pool, see if everything running correctly, and then you can be maybe sure that you are uh, yeah good on mainnet once you join there, and then you have already tested everything. So yeah, just feel free to join. No must, but I think it's very nice that we can yeah all together test on this this network. So it's finally running again, and yeah, more pools will come there in the future for sure. So yeah, stay tuned. And I think with that, um, we have everything from the agenda. And um, yeah, do you have any questions regarding supervisor, ELT pipeline, casing, or the Kaifen network in general? I think this is the right time to ask. Yes, this is done manually and we will soon do it. Since, of course, CalfPress is changing, RPress is changing, we, of course, have a very large buffer there or margin to account for these fluctuations. But um, we also saw it that the RPress was performing yeah, um, quite high. So that's why yeah, soon there will be a mainnet upgrade and also there will be an upgrade to the min delegation of the pools since um, also in general the protocol stake actually uh, increased quite much. So yeah, we also want to yeah adjust all the parameters in a yeah regular month yeah few monthly intervals basically. So to the first R question, will it ever go to one hundred dollars again? Hmm. Yeah, we will see when it is the case. No, of course um, we will then just adjust um, our um, storage cost. So it should always be uh, profitable for you validators um, to always upload um, through Kive and yeah. If it is that price, it will be, but yeah, then we have to increase, of course, the funding side to account for that. And um, with uh, osmosis and liquidity, yes, uh, so we will, we are, we noticed that liquidity is quite low and we're working on that. I think that's all I can say. So regarding on pools which come on mainnet, um, actually today, a uh, pool was just proposed on mainnet in the governance. So it's actually um, noble right now. Um, just proposed a few hours ago. So if you want to vote, feel free. And um, for next pools, I would say just yeah, take a look on Kaon. Um, there are definitely some hot candidates there. Uh, nothing to confirm yet, but yeah, you can expect that most pools on Kaon will at some point in time uh, will find their way on mainnet. And ETA for noble is exactly one week. Yes, so. Um, so we already start, started an osmosis pool a few months ago, uh, encountered many issues there, so we never touched it again. Um, also, they have an issue where apparently um, at certain WASM versions, or from the WASM module, you can't properly do state things, and that's the case from around block height 3 to 5 million. So there's actually like a gap where you can't do state sync snapshots of the osmosis chain. But um, I think we are currently at 87.
have no 88% with osmosis. So if it helps you, um, we can um, test it again, maybe on Quelia. So it's uh, just enough for you um, that we can um, yeah, try it out again with newer heights or actually maybe live heights even. So in case you have to like resync again, which is I guess often the case, you can take some snapshots from there. Yes, we can we can investigate that. Uh, yeah, maybe regarding the question uh, by Colot, I think we can say that we are um, yeah constantly working on uh, yeah trying to integrate um, some more ecosystems than the Cosmos ecosystem, and yeah we have definitely uh, heard about the um, yeah, EIP four eight four four upgrade, um, and yeah I think we can expect some. Um, yeah, some more ecosystems integrated um, in the next month, hopefully, um, definitely on Kon. Um, and yeah, I think we will update you regarding this when there's something, um, yeah, thumbs, uh, something uh, ready to to um, yeah start kicking off um, a better testing program or yeah things like this. Yeah, so I think um, if you don't have any further questions, I think we can wrap up our first. Um, Builder score, and I would say thanks for joining all. Uh, thanks for asking all those interesting questions. Definitely want to answer them, and yeah, stay tuned. So, um, like I said previously, we want to make this uh, regularly to just post what updates and um, hopefully answering questions. We um, also have, I think, um, ah, yeah, we have of course also recorded this call. So, if you want to. Uh, watch it later again with all the notes. Uh, you can, of course, do that. Of course, um, everything but which we just presented is also documented in our docs, so you can also check out the uh, updates there. And I think, uh, Christopher, we also have a Google form uh, regarding this call uh, for some feedback. Uh, maybe we can also share it right now. I think this is a good time. And yeah, if you don't have anything left, thanks for joining.